Jonas and I are up early in the morning. We're going to film some sharks. I'm so excited. <laughs> in to see the sharks. This is a nurse shark. It is the laziest shark in the world. But does that mean it's any less important? And for that matter, how would you even figure out how important it was? People think these nurse sharks, people tend to think of them as being like a kind of ugly brown shark that sits on the bottom. But if you, when you see them up close, especially in good light, they're actually beautiful. So Jonas and I have come to document an interesting question. Something so basic. How important are sharks in their ecosystem? And to do that, we're here at Moat to see an old friend of mine. How's good it going, man? How is this, how is this relevant? I am Dr. Nick Whitney. I'm the head of the Behavioral Ecology and Physiology program here at Moat Marine Laboratory. Nick is a shark guy, and most people today will agree with him that sharks are important. But as a biologist, you can't just say they're important without showing it. In fact, it's kind of a difficult question. It's very commonly said that sharks as apex predators play a large role in maintaining balance in the ecosystem, but it's really hard to show that with empirical data. And that gets to this study's objective. We are trying to figure out how much energy sharks use in the wild. Now Nick sat us down, walked us through what he's doing here. Let me give you the big picture. This is a food pyramid. Here's the plankton, here's the little fish, and the bigger fish, and here are sharks. Now sharks eat a lot of fish. Now essentially what we're looking at here is energy flow in an ecosystem. As a biologist, you'd like to know how much energy every species of shark uses. The first step is to understand a shark's metabolism. And that's important because knowing that will help us understand how much a shark eats and hence understand part of their impact on their ecosystem. Of course, every species of shark has a different metabolism and up until now we didn't know what that was for nurse sharks. So we have these animals here so we can record their swimming activity in captivity while they're in a respirometer that records their oxygen consumption and we can connect their swimming activity to their oxygen consumption. So in other words, the faster a shark swims, the more oxygen it uses. Uh, whereas a shark just lying still resting on the bottom uses very little oxygen. And clearly because a nurse shark has this amazing ability to rest on the ocean floor and actively pump water over its gills, something that most sharks can't do, it doesn't need to swim just to breathe. It'll use much less oxygen, meaning less energy, than a more active species like, say, a mako. We'll put a lid down over the top so it's completely sealed off. There can be no gas exchange between the water and the air. We'll have an oxygen probe in here so we'll record how much oxygen the animal's consuming while it swims around the circle. So we try and get all of the air bubbles out from under the lid so that it's not artificially increasing the oxygen level in the water that the shark is swimming in. Any depletion of oxygen in in that water is going to be from the shark's activity, the shark breathing and using the oxygen, releasing carbon dioxide. We've got a camera mounted on the ceiling looking straight down into this tank so we can actually get away from the tank so we're not disturbing the shark and still watch it. We can tell when it's swimming, when it's resting, but when we know the distance they're swimming on these laps, we can time it and tell how fast they're swimming. So basically they measured how much energy these nurse sharks used at different swimming speeds. What they found was that when at rest, these sharks use much less energy than any shark measured to date. But when they start swimming, it was a relatively huge jump in energy costs. In fact, that jump was greater in comparison to any shark measured so far. And I suppose if you know nurse sharks, maybe this isn't so surprising. Anybody can swim, but can you stop? Nurse sharks may be called lazy. And by some definitions, they do own the title for the laziest shark. But in the shark world, that just means they've got a low metabolism and they're really good at not swimming. It's kind of like their superpower. And knowing this helps us know more about how important they are in their environment. Pretty cool. So as biologists, Jonas and I wanted to take this a little bit deeper into the science, stuff you wouldn't normally get on TV. But stay tuned because this is a three-part series. Next, we're going to look at shark fishing. What's the real science behind shark catch and release? And let me just say, this is where it gets exciting. And also, if you're interested, I'm putting links to this NSF project and the paper in the links below. It would be a video about Hawaiian tree snails or something, <laughs> and then it would cut to Rob shirtless on the beach walking. Oh, um, worked that <laughs> I don't know how I just work like, it in. How, like how is this how is this relevant? <laughs>